you need to guard your thoughts. What you allow in there is what ultimately you become. If your life always you think about what people think about me, hey, you must be more concerned with what does God think about you. Not what other people think about you. Now, you see what human beings have done to themselves. Because we don't see what happens in the spirit world. We are all like blind people. I was reading a certain uh, joke. Two blind people were about to fight. Then the guy who had eyes says, Ah! You own a knife, Uzampaya, Msako. Then both of them ran away from each other. Why? Because they couldn't say, hey, we are on a knife. Ah, let me. Let me go. Now, when you are both blind, you can speculate over so many things, huh? Now, you know what has happened in human society? One human being knows that people are not seeing what I'm speaking. So he takes that advantage to start deceiving people. I can see in the spirit. I can see in the spirit. There's someone. Something bad is about to happen in your family. Oh, and everyone will start thinking about uh, their sick patient. You know? If you are there, come. And then multiple people come. Because I mean, it's a vague thing. Huh? Oh my. So people are able to manipulate each other. Because I mean, when a person speaks with an emotion, you say, I think this is real. This should be the power of God. This is God. And that is how people get misled. Listen to me, God has no drama. Yes, when he speaks, one person will shake, another person won't even shake. There's so much which has happened where I never felt any emotion, but God later, God later came to vindicate it. Like Brother Piri, the way he died. Those who come to midweek service, you remember the testimony I gave. Brother Mansa is, is a witness. Uh, three days before he died, is it four days before he died? That must have been on a Tuesday or something like that. I was just doing other things. Then a thought just dropped in my mind, Brother Piri. Then I texted uh, Brother Mansa. I said, We need to visit Brother Piri on Saturday. Did you receive that text, brother? Mm. Yeah. I told him we, we need to see him on Saturday. Well, <laughs> I didn't have the money to go to Rufunsa, but I just said we need to go visit him on Saturday. The following day, he never left my mind. I even told my wife, I said, you know, we need to visit those people. The following day, I started praying for him. I said, Lord, please protect them. Protect them. The following day, that was on the third day. Now, you need to remember that I had not called them for three, four months. But that week, it just dropped in the heart. I received a call from the family and they said, oh, Brother Peter is very sick. That's the time I posted something in the WhatsApp group that can we send him something. So we, we got some money and we, we sent him. I told them, can you take him to the, because it's very far where he is, so I told them, can you take him to the clinic or hospital. Then, well, the following day he died. And on Saturday, we went there for his burial. Now, if we are going to be sensitive spiritually, when something is happening very far, your spirit will catch it. The first time, you may not know exactly what's going on. Sometimes it may come in form of a deep sadness on your heart.
When you feel like that, start praying. Or it could be the Lord is just steering your spirit to prepare. So, most of you, you started preparing to go to Rufunsa on Saturday, but myself and Brother Mansa, we prepared way before the brother died. So, Saturday we were already geared. Well, obviously, the Lord was telling us to be ready. Saturday, you have to be in Rufunsa. Now, that is how important it is to walk in the Spirit. Now, you know what? When that thing came on my heart, I didn't call Brother Mansa. Hey, Brother Mansa. <laughs> so that now, Brother Mansa says, hey, I think, you know, Pastor, the Lord is speaking. If there's one thing I've learned, yes, the anointing of God can come on you. Yeah, you can be emotional. But many times, God has no drama. I've come to learn that God works in simplicity. I've also come to learn that human beings are very carnal that many times they are in the flesh and they think they are in the spirit. You know, it's very easy to create drama. I can create drama in this church. Come, 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 come. With ashes following. Do all sorts of things. And you know, that is what interests people. Before you realize it, there will be all sorts of women coming here. You see, I can, I can start selling anointing oil. You do this, you do that. People are in the flesh and they can easily be deceived by a person because they are all blind. They, they, they are not sure whether really the spirit is there. And once they see an emotion, they say, no, I think God is there. Blessed are you if you are able to hear the word of God and it reaches your heart, not the flesh. If you are able to discern and say, the Lord is speaking to me now. Do you understand that? Let me close with this second testimony. <clears throat> There was this woman, you can find it in, the, in this book, uh, I think, uh, uh, this is on page 33. Uh, 33. Brother Branham mentions about this in a message, uh, why are people tossed to and fro? Please read, read that message. I was able to print it from the internet. It's only, uh, only eight pages, only eight pages. It, um, you, you can print it, you know. No, actually, this one is contending for the faith. Contending for the faith. Now, contending for the faith is only just nine pages. The other one, I don't know how many pages, but <clears throat> find a way to to read it. You know, Brother Branham talks about fanaticism. Yeah, let me read from. Uh, let, let, let me refer to it. Uh, page thirty-three. Despite the many times he tried to explain the spiritual aspect of his gift, most people could not comprehend it. So there was, uh, uh, let, let me read again. Despite the many times he tried to explain the spiritual aspect of his gift, most people could not comprehend it. There was no harm in that. The harm came when the people used his explanation of the gift to try to duplicate his ministry. Now, do you know that even today there are many people who try to duplicate Brother Branham's ministry? They want to show like they have discernment. Hey, there are even end time message believers who have been caught up in that. And many have even prophesied false things. Trying to go prophetic. <laughs> I believe in prophecy. But you need to know whether you are an atmospheric prophet or you are really sent by the Lord. Because they are atmospheric prophets. They prophesy depending on how the atmosphere is. If, 
if there's a lot of excitement, you know, sometimes we get excited. We pray, we shout, we scream. You know, as you are praying and you are praying, so someone feels that excitement. And then some thoughts drop into their mind. Then say, the Lord is speaking to me. Now, I believe in the Lord speaking. But you really need to know if the Lord is really speaking. Or it is just your emotion. Reminds me of the, some people who are praying in a small room. Then as they are praying, one person turned the fan on because it was getting hot. So one fellow goes in the spirit. I can hear the spirit moving. It was actually the fan. You know the way it was. I can feel. Can you hear the. That fellow didn't know there was an elect- a fan in the house. That is how people can be carnal, you know. <laughs> now, listen to what Brother Branham says here. Uh, well, this is a biography. This became painfully clear one morning. Let, let me just narrate it because I know the, the story. You can find it in the message why people are tossed to and fro. So, Brother Branham is at home. And then there is a woman who came into the house. She wanted to be prayed for. So, Brother Branham noticed as she entered the sitting room, she was looking nervous. No, no, not really shaking, but, you know, she was... Yeah, manta, manta. So, Brother Branham says, yeah, sister, what's the problem? She says, uh, Brother Branham, um, I have... I used to have seven demons. And uh, two went out. I remember five. Let me just read it because I've forgotten some details. The woman sat in the cushion chair, took off her shoes and stockings, tucked her legs under herself, and then rubbed her hands together nervously. Her face looked haggard. When Bill asked her what was wrong, all she said was she felt funny. He praised her for more details. But she remained vague and mysterious. Ah, actually, she, she didn't say what was wrong with her. Brother Branham was telling her, what is the problem? So the only thing she was telling Brother Branham is, I'm feeling funny, funny. <laughs> then the vision came. As, well, when she said that, you know, no matter how Brother Branham tried to ask her, she wasn't opening up to tell her problem. And as Brother Branham was speaking to her, then a vision shot. The vision came. This is what Brother Branham says. Lady, you come from St. Louis. Your husband is on the police force there. So she answers, yes, that's right. How did you know? Brother Branham didn't answer her question. He was still watching the vision. You used to be, now listen to this. Both husbands and wives, listen to this. This is what Brother Branham was seeing in the vision. He said, you used to be a lovely housekeeper, but recently your house looks like a pig pen. Your grown daughter is there now taking care of your husband. Oh, let that sink in. Brother Branham seeing a vision. He sees the house, the home of this woman. It looks dirty. Messed up. And he, he even saw it in the vision that the woman was not okay and it was her daughter now who was taking care of her father. You were right. Who told you that? When you started feeling funny, so, Brother Branham is, singing, is still seeing a vision. When you started feeling funny, you went, to, you went to see a doctor. He gave you a hormone shot. Then you went down to a certain church where the minister said you were possessed by devils. 
He sent you to see a preacher out in California. Who told you that you had seven devils? You believed him because you thought that explained your funny feelings. Then you listened to a woman preacher who said you had five devils. She told you to come to Jeffersonville and see me about it. Now what, what, a, what a special gift this man had. You, you can imagine he's able to tell her to say the moment you, you started feeling funny you went to a doctor you went to a doctor and then from the doctor you visited a church. Brother Branham was able to see it in the vision what this preacher told this woman. Says the preacher told you you had seven demons. Then thereafter you went to another woman preacher. She told you you have five demons. Now when Brother Branham came out of the vision you know what the woman said? I want you to listen to what the woman said. Yes, that is all true. How did you know? Did my daughter call you? Now, she didn't know about the ministry of Brother Bram. She didn't know you were seeing a vision. She says, is it my daughter who found you? The vision ended and Brother Branham answered her. The Holy Spirit told me those things by a vision. The woman untucked her legs and straightened her back. Now, now listen to what the woman says. Now I can get to the bottom of this. I haven't eaten in several days and I'm not going to eat until I find out what happened to those two devils. If I can learn why those two devils left me, I can make the rest of them go the same way. Wow. So Brother Branham had not yet told her what God was speaking. But here is what Brother Branham told her. Lady, you haven't got any devils to begin with. I haven't? No, ma'am. Didn't you watch your mother go through the change of life? The same thing is happening to you. What do you think those hormone shots were for? So, Brother Branham tells her to say, what you are going through is because you are reaching menopause. So, when a woman reaches that, it affects women differently. There is, there is an emotion of imbalance. Now, hey, sister, if you haven't been cleaning your home, don't say, hey, you know, even prophet saw it. That's not what we're talking about. He didn't end there. I'm still reading here. So, Brother Branham tells her, you don't have any demon. It's a natural phenomena which is happening to you. Your life is changing now. You are going into uh, uh, a change of life cycle. Then he asks her, why do you think that your doctor gave you those hormone shots? It's because of the hormone imbalance. Then here is what she says. They were for menopause. That's what it is. Now, this is what she asked Brother Brown. Are you going to pray for me and cast it away? Then Brother Branham answers, There is nothing to cast away. Your funny feelings aren't caused by devils. It's just a natural condition of life. Now, that's a true prophet who was able to see everything in the spirit. But you know, when I read a thing like this, it tells you there are many people who've confused their lives for lack of knowledge. Is that right? And he goes ahead, well, you can read it in your own time. Brother Branham goes ahead and tells her, no, let me read it, because this is important, especially for you couples. And if I don't read this part, there will be problems after knocking this service. You know, I'm going through this stage in my life. Even uh, Brother Piri quoted it. So let me finish uh, quoting. 
lest someone uh, misquotes me. And sisters, I want you to listen to this very carefully. <laughs> okay. Um, where is that? So after Brother Bram said these things to her, her face relaxed noticeably. Brother Branham asked her if she wanted to eat something. So, uh, she suddenly became happy and you could see the relief in her. Now this is what Brother Branham said to her. Go home now. Straighten up your house. And then bake your husband a nice apple pie. Amen, sisters. <laughs> Brothers, amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. uh, bake your husband a nice apple pie. Wherever there's apple pie, please, uh, husbands, if uh, you are believers of the message, <laughs> you, you, you can fill in what you want there. Um, Bake your husband a nice apple pie. When he comes home tonight, sit on his lap, throw both your arms around him, kiss him, and tell him you love him. <laughs> Having interpreters like this is a problem. <laughs> Who have a word for every English word? You know? huh? From Now listen to this. From now on, Live like a Christian woman ought to live. So, Brother Branham knew that she was going through what she was going through because of what was happening to her hormones, right? But in the scripture we read that one of the fruits we need to have is self-control. Is that right? There's joy, there's peace, but there's also self-control. So Brother Branham advises her to say, you need to show love to your husband. You need to be a good Christian woman. And I want to believe her home changed after that. But that is not the focus of my message. When I read that, it tells you how people are able to deceive each other. Think about the preacher man who told this woman, you have seven demons. Where did they get that from? And the woman believed it. Now watch this thing. Because she believed it, she started living like that. What you believe, what you open your heart to, controls your behavior. She even went in fasting. I want these demons to go. I want these demons to go. You need to watch your mind. You need to watch what you believe. Even in this audience, there are some people living very defeated lives because they've believed the lies of Satan thrown at their minds. Making them believe you are not good enough. Other people are better than you. Now, when you believe those things, it will show in the way you conduct yourself, in the way you behave. I want you to know. I want you to know, sister, whoever you are, you are not a second class citizen in the kingdom of God. Brother, whoever you are, I don't care what people have said about your life. I don't care how many times you failed your grade 7, grade 9 or 12. Never at any time think you are a second class citizen. You are a child of God. Bought by the precious blood of Jesus. That is your right. That is your birthright. But even if you have a birthright, if you don't know it, you exchange it for a pottage with the devil. You live closed up in your heart. 
always thinking about what people think about you. The mind is a very sensitive place. Every time you wake up, I want you to know this. God loves you. That is why he's given you bread. That is why you are so unique. You need to thank the Lord for the life he has given you. Don't live in self-hate. If you made mistakes in the past, don't keep every prayer you pray, oh God, forgive me. You know there are people like that. Every time something bad happens, they think maybe it's because of what I did many years ago. The day you prayed and you repented, God took your sins and he threw them in the sea of forgetfulness. You now need to live a new life. Forgetting the past, forgetting whatever vision you were, whatever you did. As long as God has given you another opportunity today, remember the word of God says, His mercies are new every morning. He looks at you as though it is Adam who has popped out of the ground with a new opportunity to do things right, to overcome, and everything you need has already been put in you. It is you who will take away from what God has given you. You say, am I good enough? Uh, they used to tell me I'm bad. Remember, whatever words, bad words people have spoken, they can have a strong influence. When I was in grade 3, my performance had gone down at school. In grade 2 and 3, I think. And we had a terrible teacher. Oh, that teacher would scream. But we all used to be afraid of that. You know, we were little boys. And you know, schools of those days, you wear a big shirt and... Even when it's cold. And when she gives an exercise, I remember I could not pay attention to what she was explaining. I was afraid of getting wrong answers. And oh my, when you do something wrong, she had a whip and she used to say, do this. And then she gets a hard ruler. She strikes you. She could slap, she could... And we used to be afraid of her. Well, and then those who do well, she would put them on one side. I still remember that. She would say, these are good boys and girls. All of you are, you know, you, you, you are good for nothing. And now she would give whips to these on one side. No, no, no. These who are good. They were the ones who were now hitting us on the... And then you know, we would walk out of that class thinking, ah, I think us, we are bad, we, we, we are doomed. <laughs> These are guys who are good. <laughs> now, that teacher had very bad teaching tactics. Because <laughs> that was damaging our psychic. <laughs> we started feeling so very much afraid of making mistakes. <laughs> oh my. Then it so happened one day. We came very early because we were very afraid of going late. Then we were told, oh, your teacher is no longer here. She's been transferred to another school. You should have seen the jubilation. All of us were getting things wrong. You know? We felt so happy. Oh, she's no longer there. And then we were given a new teacher. I still remember her name. Mrs. Mwanto. God bless her heart. First day she came. We were all wondering what kind of teacher this is. Then she looked in the class. She pointed at me and says, You, come. Now, always, I always thought I was so bad I could never be sent 
or do anything. Even, even to rub the board was such a privilege. And I felt I was so unworthy even rubbing the board. That is how bad things were. So she pointed at me and said, you, come. I thought she was calling another person. You. Oh, so today I was the chosen one. I stood up. And in the mind, have I done something wrong already? She says, uh, I want to buy Coca-Cola. I still remember that. She gave me some coins. says, go there, you buy. I held that bottle <laughs> and that money. I felt like I was the best pupil in the world. <laughs> no, brothers and sisters, that sounds funny. But listen to me. That changed my academic life forever. That day. I rushed there, I bought, and I gave it to her. And she said, good boy. Oh, it was like a stamp put on my heart. From that day, I didn't want to disappoint Mrs. Mwanto. When she was explaining, my ears were wide and my eyes were wide. I wanted to follow everything because I didn't want to disappoint Mrs. Mantle. From that day, my academic performance changed. My grades started improving. My numbers started improving. By the time I was in the sixth grade, I wrote my grade 7 exam in my 6th grade. We wrote the same exam with Brother Nzima. He can tell you, I beat a lot of people at that school. <laughs> oh, is that so? You know, but I wrote it in the 6th grade. Can you see that? Now, if I ask you, what turned things around? Now listen, it's not like that intelligence suddenly came in me. No. It was already inside. But I believed someone taught me I was bad, I was good for nothing, and I believed that, and because I believed it, it became my reality. But someone came and told me, good boy. For the first time, I felt appreciated. Oh, later on I became good not because good performance was never in me but because of what I allowed in my mind that is why parents we need to be careful how, what we speak in our home environments it is good to discipline children but let them know you also believe them you know some home environments are terrible Chimutu Coseway. You, 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 you know there are some homes with such a language? Oh yeah, I've seen it. Very abusive language. That has a long-term psychological damage on the children. When a child does well, tell them good boy, good girl, buy them something. Encourage them. Let them not grow up believing they are bad, they are terrible, they are good for nothing. And always remember, if you say Chimutu, if you say Koswe, you are the bigger Koswe. Because you are the one who gave birth to that Koswe. If you say big head, you have the big head. Whatever is in the child, that's what you are. And if you are not careful, that terrible bad language continues. And children will grow up with that inferiority complex. Let us tell our children, let us appreciate them. Every time when my two boys do well, when they pass number one, two, three, I take them out. Even when I'm broke, I take them out for a meal, buy them more books. I'll tell them, what do you want? Okay, me, I need a car, I need this. Let your children learn that you appreciate them. It really helps them. Watch what comes to your mind. 
Now don't say in chifuka chake ni sina shite succeed ndimo naweza niita mira. Now you have free will, you can turn things around. Now that you know you are not a cause now you know that actually I'm not a you have an opportunity to change things. So don't throw everything to say ninangala so ine chifuka makolo. Now as long as you are alive and breathing, you have an opportunity to make a better decision. Shall we stand? Am I speaking to someone? Am I speaking to someone? I want you to walk out of this church knowing you are a child of God. Knowing that God wants the best out of you. But always remember, it's not just the physical reality. There are demons in this world and there is also the Holy Spirit. Demons will always work wanting your attention. And they come through so many ways. Influence on your mind comes through what people are speaking. Comes through what you are watching through television. I have started speaking something which I forgot to finish. I said the other day I put a cartoon for my boy. Now we don't have television because I'm very strict on what children are watching in the home. So I, 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 I use a particular platform and I restrict it to certain things they can watch. So there are certain cartoons they watch, it, they, it, they teach them science, history and all that. And very educative, very decent. So now this time I was very busy. So the boy says, Daddy, can I watch now? And they have particular time to watch. They know it's 5 p.m., 17 hours. No other time, unless I'm very busy. Don't let your children watch at any time, anyhow. Have a particular time. I know TV, a long time when we were growing up, you remember, TV is number 17 hours. And we didn't know how to read 17 hours. So the, we saw where the shadow used to stop. We, so we, we took charcoal. So when we see the shadow, the problems were when it was June. We didn't know what time it was, you know. But you know, there was time. But now it's different. TV is 24 hours. But in the home, I tell them 17 hours. And you watch from here to there. And if you haven't read, you haven't been studying, no watching. Those are laws in the home. So now, this time I was very busy. So I tell you, I wanted to watch something. So I said, okay, you can watch. Now, this time I didn't see what he was watching. So he just clicked on a cartoon. Bah. I could only hear the volume, you know, the way cartoons speak. Volume. Volume so, like, volume. Okay, okay. Volume. Just watching cartoons. And I was nearby studying, you know. Then I started hearing something. What the, the cartoons were talking. You won't believe what the cartoons were saying. Nasty things. So, do you know how to kiss? If you want to do this and that, hey, wait a minute, what are you watching? When I watched it, it was a cartoon. Yes, a cartoon. Yes, a cartoon. And you would think it's, it's uh, when you're just seeing images, you, you won't pay attention. Now, that is dangerous. The e- the, this evil world, it wants to pollute the minds of your children through any opportunity. Do you know in cartoons now they show two men kissing? Do you know that? Oh, if you're thinking, no, that's number my cartoons. Dear parents, you don't know what filth is there. For me, I take time to watch through a cartoon before my kids watch it. And there is so much filth in many cartoons you think they are innocent. Remember there is an agenda by the West to make uh, 
a man marrying a man, woman marrying a woman, to look normal. And they've said it in cartoons now. And if you don't watch it, your, your children know more than you. They are watching stuff you are not aware about. And they are present here. Don't think they are little innocent heads. There is so much which goes on in their mind than you know. And if as a high priest of the house you don't know, you won't know that there is rubbish, there are demons entering their lives. You need to be interested. And some of you say, ah, me also, I use a phone. This can be a bigger devil than the TV screen. It's a devil more closer to the eyes than the one on the wall. If you don't monitor. You understand what I'm speaking? When a child grows up, they will reach a stage when they need to make a decision. 18 years old, they are about. At that time, you can't control everything. It's at that time you can say, I've done what I can. It's for them to make a decision. But as long as they are young, they are under the roof of my house. I need to watch what enters through the door. I need to watch what comes through the screen. What do I mean? Watching what comes through the door. She came from the holiday. She wears trousers. Next day, your children will say, but that day she looks nice. Control what comes under the roof of your house. There's a lot of filth in this world that is destroying the young minds of people. I teach at a college and Yvonne has seen it. When they come, first year students at the college, very innocent. Innocent virgins. Second year, you see their change. Girls who are not drinking, they start drinking in college. And a lot of them, it's very rare to point at one who doesn't drink. In the hostels, it's marriage there. It's terrible. Now, when a child has been sent out there, because no matter how strict you are as a parent, the day your child graduates from secondary school, you are no longer in control. They can pretend when they come back after the, after the term finishes. Universities and colleges are a different world altogether. Brother Tenson, honest, Yvonne, you can bear witness to that, isn't it? It's a different world. They drink there when they come home. They want to drink. You think you still have your innocent girl, your innocent boy. You think she's still a virgin. Oh my, there's a lot of things that happens there. But if you've done your homework, the software you put in the child, the time they're at home, they'll go with it wherever they are. That is what kept some of us. Because there is a parent who cherished going to Sunday school. The Bible says, teach your child the way of righteousness. When they grow up, they will never depart from it. Even when a friend says, it's not bad. Even if they will be tempted, the day they do that, they will feel this is not my life. They will know that mm, I'm trying to pretend, but this is not me. They will want to go back to the way you taught them. Amen. So let's guard our homes. And listen to me. The devil usually wants to make it like if you're following the way the home becomes boring. No, no, no. no. There is a way to be happy, to even enjoy your lives. Away from television. Away from these things. There is peace, joy in the home. If, if you, you really have the Holy Spirit. 
spend more time talking to each other. Not when you are talking to each other, it's when the television is there talking to each other. Shall we bow as we pray? Be well, your mind. God protect it. If you are a believer and you've been careless with your mind, you need to repent. If you are a believer and you've allowed doubt in your heart, always thinking you are second class, always thinking uh, uh, God doesn't have a purpose for you, you need to repent. You are a son, you are a daughter of God. You just need to look into yourself and God will show you what is your work, what is your calling. As our eyes are closed, shall we all pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercies which are new every morning. We thank you for your blessing, O oh God. We thank you. We thank you for your love. You love us, Lord. You love us, Lord. And Satan always tries to make us doubt that love. But you love us, Lord. You have good thoughts towards us, Father. You have good thoughts towards us, Father. Let everyone know here that a child of God and you love them and you have something special for them. If only the eyes can be opened to receive that love which you've meant for them. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Whilst our eyes are closed, if you feel the Lord has spoken to you one way or another and you need prayer, as our eyes are closed, just raise your hand as I pray for you. Gracious Heavenly Father, there are hands raised through this audience. You know what each heart needs, what each heart thinks. You know what their need is. Heavenly Father, we have prayed, we realize the spirit world is real. There are dark spirits wanting to influence the thoughts, influence the mind, even as I pray right now. Oh Lord, may you help each one here to have victory over those dark clouds, the dark clouds of unbelief, the dark clouds of self-inferiority. Oh mighty God, let your light shine upon every brother and sister. But Lord, instead of a dark cloud over them, let them have that, that wonderful halo which will move with them wherever they are. In the name of Jesus, those discouraging thoughts, Father, let them learn to cast them away by giving attention to God's word, by yielding to the leading of the Spirit of God. In Jesus' wonderful holy name we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of thanks. the Lord richly bless you. You can tell your neighbor God bless you.